loved ones in long-term care facilities are the ones really feeling the impact of this virus. Many have gone now six months without a hug or a visit from their children or spouse. Reveal investigator Rebecca Lindstrom found a growing group of families who say COVID isn't the only thing that kills the elderly. Isolation does too. Mary Phipps says the pictures tell the story. This is her 96 year old mother right before COVID triggered the shelter in place order that shut down long term care facilities to visitors. And this is her mother now. It has been six months since Phipps has been able to give her mother a hug. That was March the 11th. An abrupt end to the visits that used to come three or four times a week. When we would leave, we would always hug her, tell her we loved her, and she would always want to know when we were coming back. We talked with Phipps just feet away from the nursing home where her mother lives in Cartersville. She has no idea you're right here. No, and it's, it's, it's a horrible feeling. She's tried to visit her mom at the window. You see how high it is? But now it's too high and covered by a bush. Even in her last room, her mom couldn't hold the phone and keep herself up. And I said, Mama, you don't have to. I said, you can just lay the phone down and we can just look at each other. Phipps says right now, it's not COVID, but the isolation from the shelter in place order that is killing her mother. Not only is she unable to visit, but residents don't even get to see each other. Activities are canceled. The dining hall remains closed. When you look at these two different pictures, what what do you see? I see my mother and then I see a stranger. I mean, I just, I can't stand to see her like that. It's just, that's not my mother. When I posted these pictures on Facebook, even strangers filled my feed with outrage, calling the isolation cruel, heartless, a form of abuse. Families shared pictures of their own loved ones. Others question why staff go in and out, but family members can't stand six feet away in PPE. She's starting to see things that aren't there. Maxine Williams is confident her mother is getting great care. Still, even she has noticed a difference. That's why in July, she formed Georgia Caregivers for Compromise, a group now with nearly 800 members. I felt like we needed a different approach than being totally isolated. So then I started writing the governor, Governor Kemp. The group asked for a plan by August 31st to end the prolonged physical separation. Well, the Department of Public Health says it's working on one. A spokesperson said that plan won't be rushed. Williams believes there's concern about liability. If you're not gonna do something, if you won't let anyone else come up with a solution, then you are the liability. But there is reason for concern. 84% of those that have died in Georgia with the virus were over the age of 60. 39% were living in long-term care facilities. They feel like they've been left to die alone. And the unfortunate part is they are dying alone. They are literally dying alone. In the responses that have been received, the governor points the finger back at the private sector. The head of the Department of Public Health says the we governor's order only prohibits indoor visitation. We still have high rates of disease that I don't believe it's safe to have in 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 room visitation. Outdoor visits, she says, are fine. But with active COVID cases in one third of Georgia's long term care facilities and nearly 100 counties with a positivity rate above 10 percent, the Georgia Healthcare Association says there simply isn't enough staff to coordinate and supervise visits. How are you feeling this morning? Well, I feel all right. Phipps and other family members call her mom every day. She says it's just not the same. I want to bust the door down and go in and see her. Okay, God bless. God bless you. Bye-bye. 